This is KOLD News 13 Now Sports. The Arizona Wildcats run through the NCAA tournament is dead. Sean Miller's comments made in the Pac-12 tournament are once again very alive. He touched the ball. They touched the ball. He touched the ball. He touched the ball. He touched the ball. It never gets old. It's a, but he has a point. It appears there is even more motive behind the rant. Chew on this. Moving on. Hey, when you have a Monday press conference where you apologize to your fans, your players question or have no comment on having their coach back, and your quarterback situation is plainly in the gutter, what's that spell? Nine straight losses. Things could not be worse. Our own Dave Cooney also here and got a chance to catch up with Tiger after he took some practice rounds at the golf club at Dove Mountain. He's joining us now with more and we can't wait to hear how it was, Dave. It, it, I mean, come on though, to Kilbury, what's Tiger got that, that Skills doesn't got? I mean, come on. <laughs> this is true. This right. is true. <laughs> That's right. No, it was, uh, it's always an interesting day when Tiger shows up, but I mean, come on. What's, what's the percentage on the number of people who have got to play golf with, with the president. It's got to be under 1%. Tiger actually, not everybody's Tiger. Tiger actually said he's got to golf with two presidents. He also golfed with President Clinton. But I want to show you the entrance that Tiger made today. And of course, this place, it really does come to life when Tiger gets here. I mean, behind me, uh, by the driving range, it was six to seven people deep just to get a peek at Tiger before he hit the practice round. I, I had a lady yell at me uh, as I was standing there. Get out of the way. I've been here with my son since noon. I mean, people love their tiger. Yeah, Hunter Mahan, 11 straight win wins, but I just had to give it, D, look at right there, wearing the hat all day. Yeah, I just you fixed you up right there, D, you didn't even see it. Thanks a lot, well, I'll talk to you soon. <laughs> On to the hardwood, Mike Montgomery, he pushed Alan Crabb last week, and some people, they got all bent out of shape. Sometimes you got to get in your player's face, though, you have to send a message. Sometimes you got to hurt a little feelings. You got to hurt somebody's feelings. Sean Miller, he didn't push anybody, but he did send a message last night. Maybe this was a verbal shove to get his players' attention. Hey, Oklahoma State, how about them Cowboys? Who saw this coming? Come on, let's be honest. While you're all loving what you saw, you can't honestly tell me you saw this coming week two. Let's do some baseball. Ozzie Guillen, he loves baseball. He loves bullfighting. And a few days ago, he said he loved Fidel Castro. That one got a little more attention than those first two examples. Yeah, so if you're looking to see a good drama this weekend, well, just forget the movie theater. All you had to do was go to McHale to catch the shot that was not on Thursday, or you could catch the sequel today, The Botched Shot. Hey, you know, Game 5 of the World Series was scheduled for tomorrow night in Detroit. And this just in, Game 5 has been canceled. Not because of a storm rolling in, but because of a sweep rolling out. This is KOLD News 13 Now Sports. All right, well, our first three minutes of the show here are all about a playoff and a walk-off. Pretty easy sell right here. We're going to start, though, in Augusta, where a first-time Aussie winner had to work overtime today to add some green to his sport coat collection. Let me take you out there. Tiger, though, we'll start with him. He's got four green jackets, and he flirted really hard putting on number five. Tiger shot another 70 today, and at one point he was three off the lead, but putts like that on seven, and of course that two-stroke penalty did him in. He finished five under, tied for fourth. Now as for your leaders, we got two of them at the end of regulation, and we needed a playoff on the biggest stage in golf, sudden death battle between Adam Scott and Angel Cabrera. Second playoff hole, Cabrera centimeters from sending it to another hole. You can tell by his reaction it wasn't a good one. He misses the birdie putt there. Pressure on for Scott on his birdie putt, but that one drops. And that's history right there. The first Australian to win the Master, and oh, by the way, that's Scott's first major. I got a bit defensive and felt like I wasn't being bold enough, and that's what I tried to do on the back nine, just hit, it, hit a few putts past the hole. And I played, uh, I played 14 really good ones last time, but I played maybe 20 good ones today. <laughs> and 18 and the final playoff hole were, were two of them. Former Wildcat Jim Furyk, by the way, who was on the leaderboard earlier in the week. By the way, he finished in a tie for 25th. Let's do some baseball. D-backs, Dodgers. L.A. has been feeling the blues in this series. 0-3-1 in the past four coming into the day. Now on this day, though, Josh Beckett and Trevor Cahill, they kept this one quiet. And by quiet, I mean nine innings of scoreless baseball. Trevor Cahill threw 93 pitches today. 61 of them were strikes. 
he had his stuff. Matt Kemp take it away, but one of those strikes right there. As for Josh Beckett, just as good. Nine strikeouts, and Miguel Montero up to bat, and he was witness to one of those nine strikeouts right there. He takes the wave. Beckett, though, he did make one mistake. Strikeout numbers, no strikes. Fastball hit to the hole. It's going to squeak through. Here comes Pollock, and the game belongs to the D-backs. So there you go, high drama. That was your one and only run of the game, a walk-off single courtesy of Paul Goldschmidt, his first ever. D-backs moving to 8-4, and four, and they're going to head to the new Yankee Stadium for the first time coming up next. And I said to my husband, you know, I think I'm going to run 365 days in a row without missing a day as my New Year's resolution. And this was an idea Martha Staten came up with while taking a jog last December. But I'm going to reward myself with a different beer every night for 365 consecutive nights. 40 days left, show me 40 cents using coins. Staten, who is a resource teacher at Wilson Elementary School, is now less than a half a month away from her New Year's resolution, a resolution that does include a taste of the good life. I can drink the beer at night guilt-free because I know that I ran that morning or will run tomorrow morning. Um, but, you know, the benefit is the kids see me running, they know that I run, and they like to be a part of that. One, two, two three. three. Yeah! We are counting oh, down yeah. the days of her um, running. And so at the end of the year, she's done okay. with her goal. And, and when she's done with her goal, we're going to have a big party. The 57 year old told me she averages around three to four miles a day, which starts at around 6 a.m. in the dark. However, she also added a mile during the day as she has now introduced distance running to some of her students. Why do we jog slowly first? Who can tell me? I thought, okay, there's Martha. She's going to, she's going to run. Another, you know, she's going to run the extra mile. She's going to do the extra mile in more ways than one. I think both of her goals are, 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 are very phenomenal goals, and she's being very successful at both, and uh, we're proud of her. And I think it's worth noting that Martha has qualified and will run in this year's Boston Marathon. So Martha starts every day with a jog, but ends the day like this. So this is uh, the beer refrigerator where we store uh, the beers uh, that I have yet to sample. Let's try the uh, Scarecrow. I have the beer right before dinner. Okay. I sit down with my journal. Mm -hmm. I write about my run or maybe the day. Uh -huh. And then I open up the beer. I take a picture of the bottle. I pour the beer. My husband always gets a little bit of it. And she does get a little help from her son who just happens to be the editor of Draft Magazine, and he helps her with choosing the next batch of brew. From the Northwest Side, I'm Dave Cooney for KOLD News 13 Sports, live local, late breaking.